Adam Arley joins us now. He is a former U.S. ambassador to Bahrain and former deputy State Department spokesman. First of all, the, the idea that uh, people like uh, Jim Brennan, the former uh, uh, CIA director, keep their security clearances after the White House, now the White House is threatening to take that away. Is that going to ring alarm bells in Washington, Ambassador? Well, I, th I think so. I think it'll ring alarm bells among a whole host of senior level civil servants and, and uh, U.S. government officials. I mean, look, it's not just Brennan. He talked about McCabe. He talked about Comey. These are, Dem these are Republicans as well as Democrats. And I think that we're going down a slippery slope. I mean, who's to decide what's political and what's not political? Who's to decide who gets withdrawn and who doesn't get withdrawn? So, you know, this to me, this strikes me as a way of lashing out at the president's critics. But, you know, that's part of the job is to, is to defend your positions and to explain to the American public why you're right and they're wrong. But, but attacking them this way or going after them that, in this way or uh, slanting the playing field in this way, again, seems to me to set a pretty dangerous precedent. But when a former CIA director comes out and says that the news conference uh, that he held in Helsinki with Vladimir Putin was treasonous, I think was his name, or bordered on treason. That's pretty strong stuff from a, a guy like Jim Brennan. It is strong stuff, and I think it, it might have crossed the line. But what I also think is interesting is he was talking about a public press conference. He wasn't talking about any privileged information, any access to information that, that he had that other people didn't have. He was talking about what every American saw on television and was voicing his opinion. Why should that uh, encourage retaliation from the president of the United States? Yeah. Uh, speaking of retaliation, the president seems to be threatening Iran right now in an all caps tweet. Uh, he really went after uh, the, the mullahs there. What do you make of the threats that the president and, frankly, the Iranians are trading right now? Well, I think it shows uh, heightening tension between Iran and the rest of the world. I mean, look, let's remember, Iran has been identified by this administration as one of its top foreign policy priorities. They have a history of developing nuclear weapons, of developing ballistic missiles to de deliver them, and to uh, undermining our allies in the area. And I think the administration is serious about pushing back against them. They've withdrawn from the JCPOA. We've announced tough sanctions which will take place in November and which will prevent Iran from getting revenue from oil sales. The Secretary of State yesterday said he was uh, support, the United States supported the Iranian people in their quest for justice against the mullahs. So I think what we're seeing from Iran is basically feeling the pressure. Rouhani, the, their president, threatened to close the Straits of Hormuz. Hey, let's remember, 20 percent of the world's oil supply goes to the Straits of Hormuz. The fact that Trump responded that they better be careful if they threaten the United States and international commerce, I think is a threat to be taken seriously, and it was, it was fully warranted. Could they actually close the straits? Uh, that would bring almost immediate military act uh, activity from, from countries like the U.S., would it not? Uh, I th yeah, it absolutely would. I mean, like we, like we should all know, the, the Fifth Fleet is based in Bahrain in the Persian Gulf and is there for, for the precise purpose of keeping open these straits. I think what we're seeing, though, again, is increasing desperation on the part of the regime in Tehran, which faces unprecedented public protests and public dissatisfaction with the clerical rule. The Iranian currency has, has lost more than 100, almost 100 percent of its value. It's gone from 30,000 to the dollar to, I think, about 90,000 to the dollar of the last year or so. So they're in trouble, and they're, you know, I think trying to bluster their way out of a dead end. But... Trump and the U.S. administration are making clear to them there is no way out other than uh, accepting our terms. Now, they can, they can cause problems. They've done it in the past, and they're capable of doing it in the future. Ambassador Adam Arley, thanks very much. Thank you.